this one knows my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, solid ground, earth with the tears to shroud and storm. What height of love, what depth of grief, when fears are still, when striving sees my comfort, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Good morning, I'm Pastor Dave, uh, Holy Cross Lutheran Church. This is our service for Palm Sunday. This Sunday, uh, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, as we have called it, uh, the beginning of Holy Week, uh, perhaps the most special week of all of the year as we observe um, our Savior's going to the cross to suffer, to die, but then to rise again on Easter all for us, for our forgiveness, for our victory over death, for the promise of eternal life that is all ours in Christ. I thank you for joining me for this time of worship today. And uh, let's begin with this prayer. And this is from the front of the hymnal, uh, the prayer before worship. 
O Lord, my creator, redeemer, and comforter, as I come to worship you in spirit and in truth, I humbly pray that you would open my heart to the preaching of your word so that I may repent of my sins, believe in Jesus Christ as my only Savior, and grow in grace and holiness. Hear me for the sake of his name. Amen. Then I'm going to follow just a little bit of the liturgy from divine service, the second setting on page 167 uh, in our hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll have a word of uh, confession as well here. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to uh, read the confession that we would speak together if we were gathered in the sanctuary and then after reading it uh, come back and just ask you simply within the confines of your own home to acknowledge that yes this is your confession as well let us then confess our sins to God our Father most merciful God we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean we have sinned against you in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And I would just simply ask you either just to quietly at home to acknowledge this as your confession or within your heart, if this is your sincere confession, then declare so by saying yes. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as an ordained servant of Christ, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn now to God's Word for this Palm Sunday, the Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah, the prophecy of this uh, special day, the triumphant entry from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem. And the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the rivers to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. And this is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament lesson today is from Paul's second letter, second chapter of, of Paul's uh, letter to the Philippians, and I'm reading from chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson for this morning is the account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as is recorded in Matthew chapter 21. And I'm reading verses 1 through 9. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them 
and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The trees crowd that went ahead of him and those who follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Let's join together and we'll make a confession of our Christian faith now. And we're going to use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to share just a, a message uh, today with the children. And uh, this is maybe not so much a message as it is something that, that they can do at home. Uh, it being Palm Sunday, uh, this is something that, that I made, and it kind of looks like a palm branch, doesn't it? And, and what it simply is, is three pieces of green paper that I traced my palm on, and then I wrote some special words on. I wrote the word Hosanna, I wrote the words praise the Lord, and up here I wrote thank you Jesus. And all you need for this uh, activity is, boys and girls, is you need to have uh, like a piece of paper. Now if it's not green, you can color it green, uh, and, and then trace your hand on it, and so you'll need like a pencil to trace your hand. You just put your hand up there and you trace around it, and then you'll need to have a scissors to be able to cut that out. And you might want to make uh, two or three, maybe three, at least three of your uh, hand prints uh, to glue on to this, and then and then you'll want to use a, a, a popsicle stick like this. You'll need some kind of glue, like a glue stick, and I've got a, a marker here too to write the special words on it, and you just... Uh, Draw your hand on that piece of paper and then cut it out and then uh, write some special words. Maybe you have a special Bible passage on there or you'd like to put your name on there. And then you can just go around and kind of have a Palm Sunday procession in your house and praise the Lord and thank Jesus for coming to be your Savior. Just just have some fun with this, uh, with this little craft idea and with this activity and a great way for you to have your own Palm Sunday parade uh, in your home, okay? Well, let's pray. Father, I ask that you bless the children. Uh, we thank you for their hosannas from the first Palm Sunday. They still ring in our ears today. And so bless our children, Lord. Bless them with faith and bless them in this activity as they celebrate your coming into Jerusalem to go to the cross to suffer and die for their sins. We pray and we ask that in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you have some uh, fun with that, uh, boys and girls. Um, for our message today, we're going to uh, focus in on the gospel lesson that I read to you, and I'd like to uh, read again uh, from Matthew chapter 21, uh, verses 8 and 9. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut palm, palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead and those that followed shouted, Hosanna. And let's pray. Father, Father, may these words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The word for today is Hosanna. Uh, do you know what that word means? That's, that's this great and memorable word from what we now call Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem almost 2,000 years ago. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that follow shouted, Hosanna! 
So what does that word mean? Well, to these people back then, the, this word uh, carried with it three uh, basic meanings. It was, first of all, a, a passionate plea for mercy. Lord, help us. Hosanna. Or as it says in Psalm 118, where the Hebrew word for Hosanna that was used on Palm Sunday, it first makes its appearance in, in the Bible, O oh Lord, save us. Secondly, this word, Hosanna, well, it really was a hope-filled recognition that this crowd of people who had come out to meet Jesus at the interim to Jerusalem, that they believed they were now welcoming the very one who had come to do just that. He was the one come to save them. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it was also a word that they used to express praise to Jesus for doing what they believed he was about to do. Hosanna. You're going to save us. Thank you. Hosanna in the highest. That's what the word meant for them. I'm wondering what it means for you. I'm wondering if this word, Hosanna, is even a part of your everyday vocabulary and life outside of when you come to church on Palm Sunday and are inside of the sanctuary. You know, to, to, to get at the meaning of this word for you and, and so that hopefully this word will become more a part of your daily vocabulary and, and your life outside of the church and outside of worship and the sanctuary, I want you to uh, I want you to imagine something for a few moments. I I want us to take this moment from almost two thousand years ago and let's bring it into the present. Let's take this event that happened on the streets of Jerusalem and bring it to the streets of St. Cloud, Division Street, for example, or or Ninth Avenue if you want to go north south through town. Okay. So just imagine Jesus riding into St. Cloud today. What would that scene look like along Division Street? What kind of crowd would be gathered there? Would the street be full of people? Would there be lots of excitement? Would you be there? If you would be there, why? Why would you be there? Would you just be there out of uh, idle curiosity or would you be there to, to plead to be saved? I think that's where we would all come out today, wouldn't we, in view of the virus that's, that's attacking us in our world today. We would say, Lord, save us from this virus. Would we be shouting, Hosanna, with that in mind? Lord, save me. You know, the people back in Jesus' day were shouting and, and pleading for that with this in mind. They were Shouting that with, with the plea that Jesus would now rescue them from the dreaded Roman government. They, they believed that that was his mission. And that's what brought them out in force to say, Hosanna, Lord, save us from the Roman government. But that's not why Jesus had come to Jerusalem, was it? He was on a different mission. He wasn't riding into Jerusalem in order to overthrow Rome. He was riding into Jerusalem to overthrow the powers of sin and death and the devil. His mission wasn't to assume the throne and, and rule. His mission was to go to the cross and die. That's why he was there. That's what we need him for, isn't it? That's the kind of saving that we need. Hosanna, Lord, save me. You do see that need in yourself, don't you? I mean, I think that's why to a great extent we, we come to church on Sunday morning or while you're watching this video even now, it's because you've looked at your life this past seven days. And, and even though you don't know all of them, you know enough of the sins that you have done to make you feel guilty. 
and to know that you need help, that you need forgiveness, that you need saving, that you need mercy, that you need grace, that you need Jesus. Don't we all? Hosanna. That's not literally the word that we use when we gather in this place and make confession of our sins. It's not the word that we used early on in this service when we made confession of our sins this morning to express our, our need to be saved and our need for mercy. And unlike the crowds on Palm Sunday, we don't shout those words typically from the top of our lungs, do we? No, when we make confession of our sin before God. It's more a subdued confession. When we express our need for a Savior, it's more of a subdued need. It's much more like the, the tax collector who went into his church one day and he could not bring himself to go forward. No, he stayed in the back of the church. He, he could not bring himself to look up. No, he only looked down and beat his breast, as the Bible says. He did not raise his voice, but he quietly pleaded, God, be merciful to me, a sinner or to make that confession in its Palm Sunday form, Hosanna, Lord, save me. So let me ask you, did Jesus accomplish his mission? Did Jesus go to the cross? Did he die on the cross? Did he die on the cross for you? Did his death pay for your sins in dying on the cross? Did Jesus save you? The answer to those questions kind of gives you the urge to say, Hosanna, does it? If you would, please. Let's go back to imagining the first Palm Sunday taking place here in St. Cloud. And as you imagine Jesus riding down Division Street or whatever street it is, 9th Avenue, as you uh, imagine the crowd pressing around him, um, what do you see the people in this crowd spreading on the street before Jesus? And, and what about you? As you see your friends and your neighbors take off their coats and their sweaters and whatever and, and lay it on the road, as Jesus approaches where you're standing, as he's about to pass by you, what do you lay down in front of him? You know, all four accounts of Jesus' uh, entry into Palm uh, Jerusalem into Palm Sunday tell us that many people in the crowd spread their coats out on the road before Jesus. Now let's just think about that for a moment. Think about the fact that a donkey was about to walk on them. Now if you've ever been to a parade that involves a few horses, you know the danger that comes with that territory and the presence of those horses. And back in this day of Jesus riding into Jerusalem, uh, this parade, there were no clowns with shovels to clean up what horses do, what donkeys would do. And so I ask you, what does that mean for your coat that you have laid on the road before and these donkeys are going to now ride over? And consider this as well. This was a huge crowd. Not only was Jerusalem gathered there, but all sorts of out-of-town people were gathered there as well. Who knows how many people were in that crowd? Who knows how many coats had been spread on the road before Jesus? So what do you think the chances were of you getting your own coat back in the midst of all that chaos after the parade was over and everybody's trying to go out into the street and pick up their coat and that if you were able to successfully find your own coat and retrieve it given what walked on it remember the donkeys remember no clowns to pick up after the donkeys would you ever be able to wear your coat again 
it comes down to this. Whatever anyone did lay in front of Jesus that day, especially their coats, they did it because they wanted to. They were willing to make that personal sacrifice in order to praise the one who had come to save him. They wanted to praise him for what they believed he was about to do. Now, to be sure, they were wrong about what they believed Jesus had come to do for them. They did not understand his mission. But at least they had this right. Jesus was deserving of their praise. You, by God's grace, know the truth about Jesus' mission. You not only know the truth about Jesus' mission, you have been given the blessings of his completed mission. You have been saved. You have been forgiven. Death has been defeated for you. You have victory over death. You have eternal life. All those blessings given you through faith in Jesus, a faith created by the means of grace, God's water and word and baptism sustained in the Lord's Supper, that word sustained and strengthened by his word. You have been given all of those blessings. You've been given them in Jesus. He's answered your prayer. Hosanna, Lord, save me. And he has. He's the one. He's your Savior. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It just all makes you want to lay something down before him, doesn't it? To, to do something, to... Say something to thank him, to praise him. What will you lay down in the street as he passes by you? How will you praise him in your life this week? After this time of devotion and worship is over, in your home, how will you praise him? In your life, how will you praise him? How? What will it look like in your life this week? Your, your hosannas, your thank you, Jesus. What will it sound like? Ho, 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 hosanna. Ha, ha, hallelujah. He, 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 he saved me. I've got the joy of the Lord. May the joy that you have in the Lord your Savior, sound forth from you in your life this week, in what you think and in what you say and in what you do, so that our lives are a grace-filled, continuous hosanna to the Lord, as it says in Colossians. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks unto God the Father through him. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts, your minds, in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Well, let's spend some, some time together in, in prayer as we gather our thoughts. Certainly there's many that we want to be praying for this week. We want to be praying for all around our world who are being impacted by this uh, pandemic, or the coronavirus. We want to pray for all those who are in leadership and who are trying to put together plans and carry out plans to um, prevent as, as much loss from this virus as possible. In particular, we want to remember those who are on the the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the, the EMTs, all of those people that we see so much about uh, in our news that the Lord would watch over them and protect them and bless all of their efforts and give them strength and peace and, and their families too during their, their absence. For those who have been afflicted by this disease, that, that God would be their peace and their refuge and their source of strength. For those families who have lost loved ones to this virus, we pray for their comfort and, uh, and
and their hope in Christ. We pray, too, that this, uh, this event in our world would be used by the Lord uh, for his purposes. Uh, a wake-up call to speak rather bluntly to our world of how we've forgotten our God and turned away from him. And then in the midst of this trial, uh, the Lord would use this to turn hearts of those who don't know him to him so that they would embrace what he has done for them in Jesus as their Savior and be saved not only from, from temporal death, but more importantly, from eternal death. And for the many who are struggling in our, our land today because their, their employment has gone away, they, they're not able to work, uh, they don't have paychecks coming in, and no means of support, and, and just that the Lord would provide and that he would raise up a generosity among, among us uh, to share uh, what we have so that each might have what is needed to support his body and this life. For our schools in particular, for our Prince of Peace Lutheran School, um, certainly a hard time there uh, for our congregation as well, um, that God's people would remember these ministries, that they're ongoing, that, that God's people would continue to bless these ministries with their gifts too. And we know and we trust God will provide what is needed to carry out his work. These are so many of our prayer requests, and you know, by just way of this conversation, that's been our prayer. That's what prayer is. It's, it's a conversation. All of these thoughts that we've had and, and shared, they, the Lord has heard them all. He's had his ear toward us. Before we call, he answers. While they are still speaking, he hears. So the Bible assures us. And so we thank and praise him in Jesus' name for having heard our prayers. And let's now gather together all our prayers and pray together the prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to close our worship today with uh, some songs and music uh, by Greg and Joanne Frelke. And we thank them for sharing this gift of music with us.
close our time of worship with this prayer. This is out of the front of the hymnal for after worship. Almighty and merciful God, I have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for my many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. I thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep me in faith until with all your saints I inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ my Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. God bless your day and your week as you enter into Holy Week. I invite you to uh, join us for worship Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Uh, we'll have the resources online as well as Easter Sunday.